Hey, welcome back to the second part of the Whiskey Barrel Bar build. Whiskey Barrel, say that three times fast. Anyways, uh, thanks for coming back. Um, this part is going to be a lot more in depth as far as uh, putting the top and the base together, the framing of the face of it, and the shelving, uh, and I actually how to finish the whole thing out. So if you're interested and you like the first video or want to see where the finished product goes, uh, follow along and uh, let me know what y'all think. <clears throat> so uh, getting to the point now where I'm going to go ahead and sand them down uh, before I do that uh, where I end up cutting through the rings at I'm going to hit it with my angle grinder uh, to knock down the uh, sharp areas and then I'll get to sanding Now that this one's pretty much finished up, it's basically taken back down to the wood. Um, I could still sit here and sand this thing for probably about another half hour. Um, I'll do some hand sanding on it, but finishing up with a scraping tool uh, like you just saw me use, uh, we'll get most of that hard char off of there. And then a little hand sanding to get a little bit more with some 80 grit. Uh, and then blow it off and then I'll go back uh, once I get ready before I do the shelf installs. I'll either use, uh, probably going to use some General Finishes Armor Seal, put a couple coats on it to lock everything in so that way I don't get any residual dust or anything else uh, later on uh, after the customer is using it. So on to the next half. Alright, so I got everything sanded down on the inside to where I'm good with it. Uh, the next thing I need to do is reattach uh, the bottom, which I already cut in half. So I already reinstalled it on the bottom of this one and on the other one behind it. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did to make that work. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, the barrel heads are not always straight, as you can probably see from this picture. There's a lot of, a lot of wave, a lot of movement in it. Obviously, it's not going to be ideal if you want to keep this as a visual shelf. Um, so luckily, uh, one head was wavy like this, the other one was more or less straight after uh, I got it apart. So the straight one I'm going to keep and use in its natural state as a very bottom shelf. So I still have that charred look on the very bottom. And this one is going to be the top. If for some reason both of them were wavy, uh, all I would do then is just go through the same process I'll show you guys here in a little while uh, as to how I'm going to build my shelves. And I would just create another shelf, put it directly on top of this one. And then the face frame, when I build the whole face frame around it, I'll just make sure that it covers up and is uh, flush up against the actual shelf that I installed. So that way all the shelves are flat. So that way when you put glasses, uh, whiskey bottles on top of it, they're not going to fall over. All right, so I've got the head in here. I just want to make sure it's a, got a good basic test fit. Um, there's going to be natural gaps on either side, and that's just because there's tension from the spring pulling it out. Um, so once I know that this is the right head that goes in this half of the barrel, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my clamp on it, do a test fit, undo it, and then pull the, the, uh, this head piece back out, and then put glue around it, reclamp it, make sure it's seated properly, and then I'll sink some screws in to show you how that looks.
can't get it flush on either side, don't worry about it. Um, it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to. Just get it close, because once you put your face frame on it, it's gonna hide any inconsistency. So no issue there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start screwing this ring in to try to secure the top. Um, the biggest thing that you want to have done or so you know where the screws are going to go is just, you know, find a way to make sure that every time you sink a screw in, you're hitting the edges of the barrel head. I'm only using one and quarter inch screws, which is enough to get far enough in to hold it with the glue. Uh, it's working fine, uh, but make sure you're consistent with that. So you're making sure that you're actually screwing in uh, to the head itself. Um, it'd probably be better, you know, I'm using those self-tapping screws uh, like I use to secure the rings earlier um, these ones aren't long enough so I'm really using it uh, as a drill uh, to tap in and then I've got other screws inch and a half long screws I'm just driving in on the back side probably be easier if I had uh, metal screws but I don't so this is what's been working yeah All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is figure out my top and my bottom dimensions. All right, so there's a couple of things I need to keep in consideration. First thing being is how wide my face frame is gonna be, and that's gonna be about three quarters of an inch uh, that I'm gonna be using is the, the dimensions or thickness of the, the red oak that I'm gonna be using for the face frame. On the back side, uh, there's gonna be uh, two supports for each barrel side that's gonna tie in the barrel to the top so that way if you're leaning on it, it doesn't flip over or cause any issues. It's a nice little stable platform. The other thing is the foot rest, all right, which is gonna go on the front side, a couple inches in front of the barrel, so it's comfortable where you're leaning on the top or resting on, you can put your foot up like you would at a bar. All right, so I need to keep the length of that in mind. So all those things taken consideration, uh, we're gonna go with 60 inches long by 20 inches deep for the top and the base. So we'll get working on that next.
now that I got the, uh, the top and the bottom cut the size um, and I've got them all uh, jointed and ripped down to where I need them to, I'm going to go ahead and start the glue up. So um, obviously if you haven't done the glue before or it's always a good reminder to check and I forget sometimes too and I have to go back and fix it but just make sure that um, look at the end of your wood and make sure that your, your growth rings are going in opposite directions so you got one going like this and the next one that's like that. That way it'll It'll help with warping uh, during the seasonal when humid. And here's a better look at the growth rings. This one you can tell it's coming up like this. On this one, they're coming down. So just make sure they're alternating. So I'm able to do the top and the bottom at the same side. So since uh, the top is a showpiece, I wanted to find a grain pattern that was similar. Um, and that's these two pieces right here. The bottom one, a lot of this darkness and this, these knots are going to be hidden uh, from the barrel, so I'm not as concerned with this. So I want the best pieces of the, the wood that I bought, save for the top, the shelving, and then the face frame. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started on the glue. Now it's in clamps. You can see the five uh, larger clamps that I'm using, the bar clamps, and they're alternating. Uh, the reason for this, just to make sure that the pressure is even across. If you have all five on the bottom, the tension from the clamps being squeezed is gonna force it to possibly pop off or cause a hump in the middle of your glue up. So just keep your even pressure across all of the clamps. Also, these clamps on the ends, that's to ensure that the end piece is actually stay in line. They call them clamping calls if you put it all the way across, but since I'm only doing one seam, uh, it's not really necessary for this one. These two clamps, uh, one for each seam will work just fine. And always, uh, if you do it like this, do not glue up this middle seam, uh, cause then you'll actually have a tabletop. This is just the two pieces for uh, the top and bottom. And uh, I've done that before in accident. I had to take it apart and wipe the glue off. So, uh, just pay attention to what you're doing. So now I'm working on the inside and the outside. I've already got the barrels, both of them masked off with blue painter's tape so that way I can paint the rings black. But first I want to get the initial coat of uh, General Finishes Armor Seal and Satin on the inside. Eventually there's going to be three coats on it, but I want to go ahead and get that on here first. That way it will help some of the dust and stuff like that settle down and get it sealed off so I don't have to worry about it later. The nice thing is about this is you, you can use a rag. It does, it's not really thick like poly is. You don't need a brush. You can use a brush, but I just use a rag. Just dip it in there and then just wipe it on.
All right, so shifting over to the, <clears throat> the shelving. So first thing you want to figure out exactly where you're going to lay out your shelves or how you want them to look as far as, you know, what if you're putting in here wine bottles, what size whiskey bottles, glasses and such. So uh, what I came up with and what we're going to do for this one is the bottom area on this side is going to be roughly about 13 inches. So that'll hold most of your larger whiskey bottles. The middle area is going to be around 11 inches and the top is going to be about five and a half. So that way you can put glasses and things like that up there, plenty of room for larger bottles. Uh, on this side, we're basically gonna split it down the middle. So it's gonna be roughly about 15 inches on the top and bottom. So if you have any like really big bottles, uh, you just got room for it. So that way there's an array of space for any type of bottle that you have. Now getting into sizing, sizing the shelves and trying to get an accurate uh, measurement, um, which was, you know, it's kind of critical because you want your shelves to fit in there nice. Um, so what I came up with is um, I just figured out, uh, I used my tape measure and my level. Um, so all I did is put my tape measure up here. Let's see if I can get a good view of it so you can see. So make sure it's pretty much dead set in the middle. And then I took my level, put it at whatever mark I wanted it to be at. All right, so this one was at 13. I made sure it was level, and then I went off ahead and, and marked it in pencil. And I did that all the way up. So that way I knew exactly where it was. And before I put my black marks on there, I double checked it, make sure everything was level. So that way, uh, once you get that done, you need to go ahead and, and get your measurements uh, for your inserts or your circles you're gonna have to cut out and then cut them in half for your barrel shelving. Um, so, Keeping in mind, these are obviously not square up and down. Um, so make sure where you get your measurements at. Like for instance, on this one, it's pretty much almost straight up and down. So uh, you wanna go to your widest point is basically what I'm getting at and get your measurement for there. So this one, it's 23 and a half. And the same thing on this one, the widest point, the tightest point, so that way your, your wood fits in here is 23 and a half. and that'll work for this one. The upside is gonna be a little bit more narrower, but you still wanna to go to your widest point. All right, and that one's gonna be 22 and a quarter. And then all I'm gonna do um, is to brace them up, is put bracing blocks around the back of it, trying to match the curve as much as possible. So that way I have some on the right and left that's gonna be hidden by the face frame and then underneath in the back, so that way you won't be able to see it. And that's how we're gonna work our shelving. And I just wanna show you guys a close up of the marks I made. So here's the base of the barrel. You're coming up and you've got the first set and this is gonna mark basically the three quarter inch where my shelving is gonna sit. So I have my markers for that. Here's the one on the right barrel. And then coming up a little bit further, here it is. And here's my uh, last one on the left barrel. So that's the marks. So that way I know everything's gonna align with the very bottom of this on both sides. So that way it'll be level and flat uh, as I put them in there. And all those marks, obviously they'll be hidden with the face frame. So next I'm gonna work on the shelf. So I got the blanks out of the clamps. Make sure you know which which blank goes to which shelf, so that way when you cut your circles, you're gonna have enough room uh, to cut the circle actually out. So flip them over so that way your good side or your face side is facing down because you are gonna have to put a little bit of hole when you use your circle cutting jig. Whether it's a homemade one like I have, and I'll show you here in a second, or one that you got from Rockler or Woodcraft or wherever. Uh, so next thing you wanna do is find the center of your piece that you're working on, and all I did is I just used a level and just go corner to corner and mark a line. Do the same thing on the other side. And then mark another line. And that way it gives me a center. Uh, and for this one, uh, this shelf, the total circumference of it needs to be 22 and a quarter. So half that's 11 and an eighth. And so all I did is I marked 11 and an eighth going from my center out to the side. And I did the same thing going out to the other way and then I measured it just to confirm and it's good. Um, so that's kind of how to get your measure. 
All right, so back to my other blank. It's already set up with a circle jig, ready to go. Um, so now, this is what I was talking about earlier. When you make your marks, you wanna make sure that your router bit is on the outside of it so that way when you actually cut your circle, it's not gonna be short. Now we can go ahead and cut our circle. Just remember, take uh, really small passes going to take a couple times to get through it but you don't want it to get bound up and using some foam backer like this is great so that way you don't chew into your tabletop should be kind of self-explanatory but here we go Right, now I'm getting ready to fit the half of the shelf in and I need to cut that circle in half. So I've already got my marks on the side of the barrel where the, the uh, shelf is going to fit. So I'm just using clamps as kind of a rest at the very bottom of it so I can go ahead and set my shelf on here. So I'm going to go ahead and set my shelf inside there, making sure that these glue lines are basically running straight across because I'm going to have to cut it down. So then I'm all, all I'm going to do is just mark mark on either side where the end of the barrel is. I'm going to use my track saw and then to rip it down. I'm going to mark on this side an X so that way I know this is basically going to be my, uh, my waist side, if you will, so that way I remember which side is in the barrel. All right, and it fits in here nice and clean along the edge. So now all I'm gonna do is just make sure I uh, mark this as the top face. And this is the barrel that only gets the one shelf. So this one's gonna sit in here by itself. This is the only one that's going in here. Now I just gotta fit the rest in. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm gonna start working on the face frame. Uh, I think this is probably gonna be the most difficult uh, just to make sure that we can get the curves and everything right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of scrap MDF. Um, it's a little bit easier to work with as far as fine tuning uh, any of the curves or if I wanna have to sand it down. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my barrels placed on, on here how I want them. Everything is flushed up on the base and I'm gonna basically, my face frame is gonna encompass all of this and it's gonna hide everything. It's gonna be flush with the bottom, but then on the sides and the top, it's gonna to come down an inch. So that way it basically has a little lip. Uh, Cause in the future, I'm gonna to try to um, run some uh, lights on the inside of here and I wanna be able to tuck them away uh, so that way they're hidden. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. So take my scrap piece of MDF and I figure out basically where center is uh, between these two barrels. All right, I want to bring you in for a closer look to kind of show you what I'm doing. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to start working on the face frame. Uh, I think this is probably going to be the most difficult uh, just to make sure that we can get the curves and everything right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of scrap MDF. Um, it's a little bit easier to work with as far as fine tuning uh, any of the curves if I want to have to sand it down. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got my barrels placed on, on here how I want them. Everything is flushed up on the base and I'm going to basically, my face frame is going to encompass all of this and it's going to hide everything. It's going to be flush with the bottom. But then on the sides and the top, it's going to come down an inch. So that way it basically has a little lip. Because uh, in the future, I'm going to try to um, run some uh, lights on the inside of here. And I want to be able to tuck them away uh, so that way they're hidden. 
Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. So take my scrap piece of MDF and I figure out basically where center is uh, between these two barrels. All right, I wanna bring you in for a closer look to kind of show you what I'm doing. All right, so if I go ahead and remove this piece of MDF, you can see there's a black mark here and a black mark here. All right, and that's basically center of my gonna or my MDF uh, template. All right, and then what I did is because I want my template, if I just trace the back side of it and I go ahead and cut it out, I'm not gonna get the overhang that I want. So what I am gonna do is I marked an inch on the left side and I marked an inch on the right side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over to the left right there and then I'm going to trace the inside on the right once I get that marked I'm going to slide it back over to my inch mark on the other side and then trace this side and what that's going to do is going to give me the exact curve but it's going to be that inch extension on either side Now that I got it sanded down uh, to the black line on the inside of my template, um, there's still some imperfections in here. You may be able to see some of them, but it's kind of wavy through here. Uh, all I'm gonna do now is go back and hand sand it uh, because if I don't, I left it like this. Uh, when I go back and use this as a template and use my flush trim bit on my actual piece that's gonna go on my face frame, whatever is on here is gonna translate with the router onto my finished piece. So if you don't want your finished inside edges to be weighty, make sure you take the time and go back and hand sand this and get it as smooth as you can. So that way it's just like glass when the router goes across it. All right, now that I got my, now that I got my template finished, I found a piece of wood that I'm gonna use uh, for my face frame, something that has a nice clean uh, grains, the wood's really good, there's no imperfections on it, and it's going to be covering up this big gap right here. Um, you also, what you want to do too is, is make sure the growth rings on the bottom, make sure that they're kind of cupping in, so that way the, the bump of it is on the outside. And then what I did is I took my piece of wood over to my miter saw and cut off a nice clean 90 degree edge in the bottom, something I can line my template up with. So now I'm going to go ahead and trace my template onto it, <clears throat> cut the template out on my actual piece of oak, you know, about a eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the line with my jigsaw or bandsaw, whatever you got. And then I'm going to go back in, attach my, my template back to the piece I just cut out, and then go through with my router and then. All right, so as in everything that you do, mistakes are gonna happen. Um, on this first one, I cut off my template. Part of the issue was, is uh, I got way too close to the line, and because my jigsaw isn't the best, uh, it walks in quite a bit. Um, so I have issues with, I've had issues with it. I need to get a new one or a bandsaw. But 
because I got too close to the line, if I tried to use my router on this, the inside is going to continue to be angling and looked all jacked up. So I went and cut another piece. I used a black marker as well, a little bit easier to trace it uh, and see your line. So this time I was able to stay, you know, quarter to half inch or so away from it. And I'll just creep up on it with my router so that way I get a good, um, a good cut on it. So you see when I lay my template on here that there's plenty of meat on the wood still and I have a, a nice clean uh, template. Now obviously if you have a bandsaw you can get a lot closer and not have to worry about this issue but if you're using a jigsaw they do walk a lot and they're, they're not the best uh, for this but as long as you give yourself enough room to clean it up with your router and your template, you'll be good to go. All right, for this, I'm using this uh, big half inch flush trim bit uh, and it works great for these uh, hardwoods. Uh, if it was a smaller piece, you could probably use a, a smaller bit, um, but we'll go ahead and do it. Now that I got my centerpiece on and I have it attached, all I did was countersink some holes, making sure I can drive screws actually into the barrel itself to hold everything nice and tight. Uh, and then once this is completely finished up, all these screw holes, I'll cut plugs and put old plugs back in, cut them off, and that way it'll kind of finish all off. Uh, next, I'm gonna work on the side pieces. These side trim pieces are gonna be about two inches wide barrels one inches and I want it to come in one inch as well so in order to do that uh, I, I'm going to reuse my template that I used for the centerpiece but I also had to make the reverse template so that way when I cut these pieces out I've got two templates to work off of so giving you an idea of how I'm going to do that I've got my piece of oak that I'm going to be working on <clears throat> so all I'm going to do is take my template Put it up to the oak, trace my line, move it in two inches. Go ahead and trace my next line. And now I've got the piece that I'm gonna use to attach it. So I'm just gonna cut it out like I did last time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reattach my template. Then I'll reattach the piece that I just cut off back onto my template with blue tape and super glue, route out that side, pull it off, and then I'll pop it to get the other cut on this template. So I'll get the reverse curve. So that way we've got both sets. Worked out pretty good. I'll just have to take a pencil and scribe on the back side so I can cut this piece flush. But it worked out real great. <clears throat> so now that I got my side trim pieces cut, I went ahead and scribed, cut it off so it's flush. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I marked an inch down and an inch and a quarter in to make sure I'm actually hitting into this the barrel head. So just make sure everything's flushed up. That looks good. You go ahead and countersink it. 
right at the bottom marked as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. The other thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing this too is I try to make sure that these barrel rings are kind of sharp. So I want to make sure that I'm covering these up as well. So that way you're not going to hit, hit it at all. And then I'm going to go back and get a pilot hole for the screw. I'm using two inch exterior screws for this one in particular, just so that way it's got enough screw to hold it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and get that one, get the top one in. And uh, I'll go ahead and put one in the middle and line. So now I'm going to take <clears throat> So now I'm just going to take my level put it in line with these two screws and then just go ahead and mark a spot And then I'm going to come in a half inch off the outside edge since the barrel itself the the barrel stays are uh inch just to make sure that I actually Hit the barrel. All right. Yeah, so I get to do this piece all over again because I didn't pay attention to what I'm doing and I rushed. So I got over here, I was gonna assemble my second piece and I go ahead and marked off my holes, the bottom's good. And I forgot to scribe the top and cut it off. So now I have to redo this whole piece so this hole is invisible. Good times. So now what I'm going to do is I'm getting ready to work on these bottom pieces and to make it easier on myself and to have a little bit cleaner of a look. Um, these are two inch pieces. They're going to be two inches all around, two inch wide. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to scribe on this piece, on this inside piece, and then I'm going to unbolt it, cut that piece off so I have a 90 degree angle that this sits inside of. So I'm going to have that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here, marking it
Uh, so as you can see, kind of fast forward a minute um, because I had the base was flat with the, the feet. Nothing was assembled. I kept going back and forth. My initial plan was just to attach the feet directly to it. Uh, but because they're angled, uh, you see here, and I'll show you in the bottom in a second, and they're splayed out, uh, I was concerned that they wouldn't hold up to the weight um, of the barrels being on it, people resting on it. Um, I don't have a dominal jig, and I wasn't confident in using larger dowels uh, to secure it. If I wanted to hand cut and put the through tenons where the feet actually came through, that would have been a great uh, option, but I didn't feel like I wanted to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I'll show you what I did. Now you see I moved it back onto the floor. You know, I've, I've never built one like this before, so I figured why not test it. So like I said, like it's not going anywhere. So with the two barrels on it that weighs probably about, you know, less than what I do actually, but with everything else on there, it'll be perfectly fine. So I think we're good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I'm gonna use these uh, little, they look like dominoes, but little uh, pieces of cut off oak uh, to use them to mount or set up brackets to mount the actual shelving. Um, so you're gonna need three for each shelf. That's just kind of how I worked it. Um, it's the same material that I've been using. Each piece is, it's still three quarter inch thick. The width of it, it's one, one inch, one and a quarter by three inches. So I went one and a quarter just so that way when I uh, countersunk these holes, it wasn't gonna split the wood, uh, so I didn't have any issues there. So come on in closer and I'll show you. All right, so on either side of my barrel, I've got these black lines for the lower shelf and then for the upper shelf. And that delineates where my actual shelf is gonna fall. So these pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and they're gonna get installed about an eighth of an inch or so inset to make sure that my uh, face frame doesn't come into contact with it. So that way this isn't actually pushed out so my face frame uh, doesn't sit flush. Um, so all we're gonna do is, is line this up with the bottom of the, this uh, black mark here so the shelf sits right on top of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drive one screw in to start. All right, in the back, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my level up on top, going from the front to the back of the barrel, making sure it's level. And I'm gonna go ahead and set in my little bracket. Not sure if you can see it very well, but we're level here. And then it's level front to back and that's what we want the next thing is i need to be able to secure this top to these uh to the actual brackets so all i'm going to be using all i'm going to be using 
are these uh, inch and a quarter trim nails. And what that'll let me do is it'll sink just below and they won't be noticeable at all uh, when they sink below once it's stained. Um, so I'm gonna mark my spots. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill it and then I'll go ahead and sink it in. Just remember you've got two other screws that are running in here on your brackets. So just taking that into account so you don't end up hitting your screws and split the wood. All right, now that I got my holes pre-drilled, I wanna go ahead and make sure this shelf is actually in there where it's supposed to be, nice and tight to the back, and go ahead and drive these in. Again, make sure you pre-drill your holes. If you don't, you're definitely gonna split it and then you're gonna have to redo it and it's not gonna be fun for All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all these plugs. The, the glue is dry enough, so that shouldn't be an issue. If you don't have one of these Japanese pull saws, they're inexpensive and they're awesome. I use this for everything, and they're really, really great for cutting these uh, plugs off flush. So I'll show you how it works. So I just take my time and I put my finger on top of the blade just so that way I can kind of keep it flush with the surface and just just work it and they're extremely sharp uh, so if you smack your So now that I've got my face frame all mounted back on, everything's stained, I'm still gonna have to put a clear coat on the whole thing again. Uh, but now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the complete barrel bar piece to the actual base. Um, ideally, I'd like to actually attach it from the bottom, which I'll probably put some reinforcing screws underneath uh, later on. But because it's so awkward, the way that I'm gonna do it um, is I went ahead and clamped one side on, I'm gonna work um, left to right, and then I'm gonna countersink uh, four holes on the inside, and then one in the middle, and go ahead and drive two inch screws through the barrel into the base. And once that's on there, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go back through uh, and then fill them with plugs, and then use a really dark stain to match the actual char color. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the plugs in. I'll show you um how i'm going to do that here the other thing to keep in mind is if you have a flush flush trim saw or a flush cut saw uh you're not going to be able to use that inside the barrel uh so you're going to have to use like a sharp chisel or something just to get uh, once it dries to take this um uh plug off so that way you can get this at flush but there's ways to do it you just have to come up with what works so i'm going to use a chisel once it's all done um so good thing is <clears throat> i guess Everything's ready sealed with a clear coat. Um, so if you do get any little bit of glue, it's an easy cleanup. Um, but try to just get just enough in the hole. So that way it'll come out a little bit, but it's not such a, a huge issue, but you don't want it everywhere. And then go ahead and set your plug in. 
tap it in. It's only going to go in a little ways, obviously, and then continue the same way. Um, and then just wait till it dries a couple hours, make sure it's good to go. Cause otherwise if it's not, and you go ahead and try to chip it out, it's, and you'll have no issues. Um, while I'm waiting for these to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the plugs to the face frame. And the way that I'm going to do that's going to be pretty much the same thing, but all I'm going to do just so that way it's not as messy is just get a little glue tray or something to put glue in and then dip the end that you're going to stick into uh, your countersink hole and then just go ahead and place it in there and try to keep your glue till minimal. That way clean up is a little bit easier. I haven't put clear coat on this. It's been stained. So if you have to do a little bit of sanding, you can, you can restain it, do a touch up. And once you put your clear coat on, it'll be fine. It'll match fine. Well, now you can kind of see what the actual face of the bar looks like. And it's really looking cool. Uh, with the stain that I decided to use, it, and it being red oak, it has a red undertone. So it matches uh, the patinaed or, you know, used white oak. Um, so... Right now, while the plugs that I just showed you guys are drying, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the foot, foot rail um, on. And all I did was just center it left to right, left to right, uh, and front to back. So it's roughly two inches in on all sides. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use uh, one, one inch screws and go ahead and drive it in uh, to secure it. Uh, part of this build before I have to cut off the plugs and do all the final finishing and touch up staining uh, was uh, putting brackets on uh, to support this table uh, once the table is attached. I went back on a couple of different ideas. Um, I was just going to put one main doubled up uh, three quarter piece of oak so it would support here. Uh, but um, in the, the inspirational picture that I got from the customer, I had two pieces, two braces, one coming from this corner in on each barrel. So that way it would support on either side. And obviously the reason for that is someone's leaning on the edge of this, uh, the tabletop. Uh, you don't want it to give in a break or cause any uh, undue issues. So that's what I went with. So um, I cut uh, enough. I'm going to glue two of these together so that way there's two supports so this is basically going to come in directly from the corner in attached with a solid 45 um, but when it attaches to the barrel I'm going to have to figure out where I want exactly where I want this to sit at because obviously the barrel is curved I'm going to have to end up shaping this so that way it sits tighter to the barrel um, but it's going to be doubly as wide so it's going to be a double wide piece uh, so that way once I attach it to the barrel at the top it'll be fine. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued up and then uh, we'll go ahead and see how it looks. An even distance across here. I'm gonna go with 14 inches, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my 14 inch at the outside of this post and I'm just going to roll the tape and then I'm just going to mark it. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, I'm going to use the same distance uh, on the other side as well. So that just kind of gives me a reference of where the actual um, the brace needs to start at. And then so I have the same distance from the top down. It's roughly six and a half inches from the top down and I'm just going to mark at the bottom of that as well uh, so that way I have a reference and uh, way too high All right, let's do this in pencil to make it a lot easier. It's always a better way. All right, so I've got my marks of where this bracket needs to be at. 
I've got 45s cut on both sides. Uh, I know which side is the flush side, the best fit side, so that's going to be up towards the top. So I'm looking at it right now. Obviously, it's a little bit lower, um, but let me bring in closer from the other side to show you what I'm going to do to try to. All right, so now that I have this here, the way that I did this on the other two, and it worked pretty good, um, is in order to get a decent uh, or a similar angle um, and I'm not a math genius or geometry. I'm just, this This is what worked for me and it worked well. So all I'm gonna do is measure basically the distance of this gap up on top between the ring and the inside of the, uh, of the piece of wood right here. And the other two are about yeah, three eighths. So all I'm gonna do to mimic that angle is I'm gonna mark up three eighths from here scribe it and cut it on my miter saw test it and that should basically get me where i need to be at and then once i have the fit i want then i'll go back up here and mark where the ring's at to cut the ring notch out and then we can go ahead and attach it <clears throat> all right so i went back to the miter saw and i cut off that piece that i marked off at three eighths and now the edge of this is basically the same path as the barrel. So all I'm gonna do now is mark off the bottom of the ring where I need to cut. Also at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and mark in pencil the foot area of my uh, support here. So that way I know when I look at it, I know where I'm drilling through, and then the, once the drill pops out, I can countersink back through so I know exactly where this is going to be at so I don't miss it, which would be uh, not cool. All okay, now that I got my notch cut out, I want to go ahead and line it up and make sure it sits how I want it to. All right, it looks pretty good. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and drill my pilot hole through the top so I know where I need to come back and countersink through. And remember to do it at the same angle, going this way, so that when the screw comes in, it goes through to the center of your actual post and not straight out the bottom. And all you need is to come out a little bit because you're gonna have to drill your countersink back through once you uh, go ahead and seat the screw all the way in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm lined back up with the top, make sure I'm sitting where I want to here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill my countersink here. attach it with some screws and glue. Right, let me go ahead and jump up here and do come back through the top. Here's my hole at. So now I've got my top piece glued in preparation to attach to here. And then on the bottom piece, I put super glue since uh, wood glue is probably not going to hold to this because of all the finish and everything else on here. But super glue will with the help of a screw. So I push the screw through a little bit so that way I can reference the hole.
on there. Alternative. It's Sherry and Unit 1045's The Buzz. Teresa K can be out of the studio. She's got you back for your Thursday afternoon try. Plus, more off screen tickets to give away. 420. That's the time to win it, Mark. think about the video not too difficult of a build it was a lot of fun if you're building for somebody else or for yourself it's a great addition to your house or somebody else's let me know what you guys think about it in the comments and what you guys would have done differently uh, and if you like the video and the channel the where it's going just hit the uh, like and the subscribe button leave a comment below and uh, what's a ball without having a drink at it you got a Chris in the first bar that I built, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Oh, man, that's good. Well, until the next build. <laughs>